Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. The past couple projects that I've done, I have have been rugs and I've used a temple. And I realized that many of you may not have used a temple before and may not know how to set one uh, up for your weaving project. So temples don't have to necessarily be used for just rugs. A lot of times they're helpful for weaving um, dish towels or any weaving project that you need to keep the uh, width very even. So I have two different types of temples here. I have a wooden temple that is a made in Sweden. The other temple is a uh, toika, which is made in Finland, and it is a metal temple. Uh, both of these temples look to be the same size, and uh, the metal temples are better for rugs because they're a little heavier duty. The wooden temples are great for dish towels. So let's demonstrate the different properties of it. So each one has a keeper that slides back and forth, and that is what keeps the bar from raising up. And if you slide the keeper off, then you can pivot the bar and use that to set it onto your fabric. And then once you have it set, you put the keeper on and it keeps it there, it won't come off. Similarly, with the metal temple, you have a keeper here and you slide that off and it pivots and you can set your uh, width. The other thing that they have in common are the teeth. Now, the Toika has these plastic guards on it. So we'll take those off. With each one, you can see the teeth are quite sharp. But with the metal temple, you can see that the teeth are set a little bit closer and they're at a little bit more of a rake. So they point they'll point downward more than the wooden temple that has, they're pointing out towards the salvage a little bit more. So the way that you set a temple, let's start with the wooden one first. It's best to do it face up. So start with your temple face up. Remove the keeper pin, and I'm just going to flip this around so that I have access to the holes on the sides. These holes correspond with holes in here. So the pin will go through the outside hole, through one of those inside holes, and into a hole on the other side. So you can see there's holes here and here that correspond. Now I can move this in and out and find a hole that lines up based on the width of my project. So let's take, we'll put the temple on the project at the reed. And then you move the left side until the teeth are about the middle of the teeth is at the outside edge of the uh, warp. So I know my warp is in this dent. And that's about the middle of where that is. Now, keeping the left side in place, you want to come to the right side and slide it over 
until the right teeth are about halfway past or halfway or in the middle of the outside warp. And that is how wide your project is. So now you're going to take and you're going to look at where the holes line up. So I'm going to carefully push this up until I can see the holes. I can see that this hole lines up with this hole here. So that's the one that I'm going to use. Now, if my project were, say, this wide, this hole would line up with that, or we could use this hole. I'm going to use this hole because it's, it's closer to the end and it'll pivot better. So let's say our warp is in between the two holes, like this. It kind of depends which hole that you decide to use on how much draw in you're willing to have. With this particular project, I already have, I've already started it, I have a fair amount of draw in, which is fine. So I'm going to push it back and use the narrower hole that, or I should say the hole that makes it narrower so that it's not pushing my project out as much. If I'm working on a uh, rug where I want every bit of uh, width and I don't want my reed rubbing on any of the draw in, I'm going to push it out a little bit more. You kind of have to experiment and see what works best for your project. This particular one, I'm actually going to go quite a bit back because of the amount of drawn that I already have. So I'm going to put my pin through that hole. And sometimes it's a little bit fiddly to find the hole. There we go. Okay. So now it's locked in place. It won't pull apart. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to bring it down to my project. And I'm going to flip it over. And on the left hand side, I'm going to put the edge of the temple right at my selvage. And I'm going to tip it up. There's It's kind of beveled here. So tip it up and put it, oh, maybe a quarter inch below your fell line. Now you're going to pivot it up like this and on the right hand selvage you're going to do the same thing kind of put your fingers under the warp and you're going to put that edge right at the edge of your selvage make sure that the pins are poking through but don't poke yourself because they are sharp then you're going to gently push down until it's flat and then slide the locking slide into place. Now, like I said, this project, I have a lot of draw in. I expected that it's not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and continue weaving without my temple. However, if I had started this project and w using a temple, then I would not have all this draw in. So one of the things that I did do wrong here is I left my pin on this side, which I shouldn't have done. Because when I beat, 
it's going to come in and it's going to hit that. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off and I'm going to flip it around. Now I could transfer the pin to the side hole, this hole instead of the side and that would be perfectly acceptable. But I can just flip the, the uh, temple around. So we'll put it over here and pivot up. And then put it on this side, pivot up, and gently push down. There. Now I can beat and not hit anything. The metal temple works in a very similar way. But it does not have... Uh, the pins like the other one does. So let's slide the keeper off and when we pivot this one you'll notice that there are holes all along this inside edge and there's a pin in the other end and we can put this pin in any of these holes to get to a very precise width. So I'm going to do the same thing. I will lay this up next to the reed and make it the width that I want it to be. And then I will move and select the hole that corresponds with how wide my project is. Then I will take it, flip it over, and I don't have to worry about any pins sticking out one side or the other. And just like we did with the other one, put the edge of the temple at your salvage, feel underneath for all the pins poking through, and on a thick project like a rug, they may not all poke through, but you do want it to be um, pretty good uh, connection. Now with the metal temple because the one bar is offset from the other bar it's going to look like it's crooked and that's okay. But you do want each side of the temple to be a similar distance away from the fell line. So I'm going to put this one about there and gen again gently and I didn't set this one as far apart as I did on the previous one um, but you would put it up at the reed get your distance that it needs or your width that it needs to be and then bring it down to your fell line so I'm about a quarter inch away on each side and then I'm going to slide this little keeper into place over both bars and that will keep it um, from pivoting. Now you do want to remove your temples uh, when you're done weaving for the day or if you walk away for an extended period of time. Um, it's just easier on your on your warp. Um, so that's how you use a temple. Now, as you've seen in the previous videos that I've done using a temple, you will weave for oh half an inch to an inch, uh, probably an inch at most, before you move your temple up. So you slide the keeper off, pivot it, move it up to the appropriate spot, Put the other side in, pivot it down, and slide the keeper in. Now obviously I put it too far to the top because I was demonstrating, but it's all you always want it to be about a quarter inch from your fell line. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this tip and found it helpful. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. 
and consider subscribing to my channel to get notification when I release future videos. Thanks and happy weaving!